I am your healing host, El Dumari. Welcome to Chango Unplugged. May us chosen ones stay connected. I am your higher consciousness. I am your higher self. I am the healed version of you. Episode, as you see, we have a change of scenery. Today's topic is about spirituality versus religion. Can't go nowhere without the purification. May today be an enlightening show. For today's show, I would just mostly let my indigo brothers take over and they explain because today is about polarity and the opposites attract, the opposite sides. So as my brother to the left, he represents spirituality. My brother to the right, he represents religion. And I will let them explain. Yeah, spirituality, what, what is going on? What you got to say? Man, religion is no different than a skin suit for the human. It's just a cage for the spirit. Listen, we are spirits before anything, and the skin suit is enough slavery for the soul. It doesn't need more shackles. It's spirituality because it represents the spirit. It's all about the liberty of the spirit. The true essence of humanity. It is yep. the pure way of life. It's autonomy. Sorry, it's connecting bro. with your innermost self. We weren't designed to be religious. As I said, we were Ain't spirit be before true. flesh and being spiritual is literally what we are designed to be. Listen, we are multidimensional beings. So limiting yourself to one belief is diminishing your power, your God-given power of freedom. Okay, so my brother to the right, what do you got to say about religion? What are some positives of religion? Cause I know he over here like kind of dogging you out, you know, so. What you got? Let me be polite and remove my shades. And I know I know you think this is evil, the sage and stuff, but this is my territory. This is my domain. This is Imperia. So you are gonna deal with it. I'm gonna continue. Put on a ma put on a mask or something. I don't need a mask. I'm okay. I don't need a mask. You guys love, yeah. All right. Religion is okay. a set of rules, restrictions, and regulations that were intended to give humans a guide to morality and faith. Yeah, but immoral humans corrupted religion's purpose of obtaining a grounded spirituality, which is now used Word. for money, politics, war, and control. You're looking at it from a negative aspect. It gave the enslaved Africans hope and faith. What about it that it saved lives? It also Facts. enslaved more lives. Actually got them through Facts. hard times by believing in these Bible Facts. scriptures. But it made them have faith in a white savior Facts. that looked like their slave masters. Facts, 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 to the enslaved Africans because the slave masters feared retaliation. Oh it created a Stockholm Syndrome effect because the same people that enslaved them gave them hope. Listen, religion and beliefs is like love and we've all been blinded by love. It blocks your Whoa. insight of various areas of your consciousness and veracity. Belief makes you rationalize delirium. The difference between religion and spirituality is religion was forced Bro. on humanity Bro. by dogma, by the orthodox Bro. religion. It was forced. It's not our natural habitat. Chumbo, can you, this guy, he talks too much. A difference between spirituality and religion is one advocates for the slavery of humanity and one advocates for the sovereignty of humanity. Choose wisely. One side is, do you want to be a slave? And one side is, do you want to be the master of oneself? Choose wisely. One side is for the follower. One side is for the leader. The goal of the sheep is to become the shepherd not to be a part of the herd your entire life. The mission of the sheep is to study the shepherd, to learn from their mistakes and their greatness. And now it's time to think for yourself and become the shepherd of self. So there's something called the sheep dog. Basically, it is the, it's like Santa's helper, where the sheep dog manage and controls the sheep. It tells them where to go, the sheep follows them to the herd. So in spiritual terms, the sheep dog is society in itself. The sheepdog is your TV, your teacher, your boss, your friends, your family, anything that dictates and manages your moves. Whoever has control over your moves is the sheepdog. And the elites is the shepherd because the elites is the puppet masters and they're puppeteers. The sheepdog is the puppeteer for the elite, right? So, and they doing the work. They are the workers. The sheepdog is the workers. Why, they, why the elites just sit back kick back, feet up, and the sheepdog out running in the field. They are the biggest slaves too, because they putting in all this work just to enslave you. They're slaves, but, they're in, but they have power to enslave you. So why would you let a slave enslave you? Be your own shepherd, baby. And being your own shepherd is here first. It's mentality first. Always mental freedom first, spiritual freedom, mental freedom first. And 
then physical freedom comes along. Because if you get physical freedom first, but you don't have mental and spiritual freedom, you lack code, you lack moral. You don't know what to do with that freedom because you're not thinking right. You don't have a moral compass to guide you. The religious man goes into a man-made building to talk to God. The spiritual person comes out in nature to talk to God. That's the difference. This is the first things created before the human is nature. So why don't you see the, the intertwine of God and nature and us? It's the best place to come. A person who is not connected to nature tells me everything about their psyche and their connection to the real God and their understanding of what God really is. If you don't understand nature, everybody has their time to understand things on this earth, right? We can't force no one. But I know if you right here, if you listening to this right here, if you still listening, you on the right path. And I love you. I salute to you. We are one for real. I am you in the fifth dimension. You are me in the third dimension. And the biggest thing is you're not, e you're not even Christian or religious because you want to be. You made that decision. It was forced on you by your family, right? Most Christians, ain't, they ain't read no whole Bible. They don't understand the Bible. They didn't read it. Watch it. Here's some proof right here. Check this out. Evidence of virginity is not found in the young woman. Then they shall bring out the young woman to the door of her father's house and have the men of the city stone her to death. That's totally extreme. But what if I told you that this actually was the Bible? Have a nice day. Women should be kept silent in places of worship, for they are not permitted to speak, but should be in submission. Check this out, right? Yeah, yeah that's, that's really like... hard. What? Now, what if I told you that this is actually not the Quran and it's the Bible? I'm not surprised at all. Yeah, I'm yeah. not surprised yeah. at all. I was yeah, like, the Quran true. does not say that about women. If a wife does not cover her head, then she should cut her hair short. And if there is anything they desire to learn, let them ask their husbands at home. We don't know everything. This is actually the Bible. Wow. Son of a gun. Women should be kept silent in places of worship. That's a little messed up. What if I told you this? That this is actually the Bible. What if I told you this was the Bible, not the Quran? Well, I am got time now. We got to take off. The patriarchal misogynistic behavior is deeply rooted in the Western civilization, such as Rome and Greece. They felt that women were an inherently inferior race of beings separate from oh. the race of men. It's like if you ask a person, why are they Christian? They probably couldn't even tell you most people. Because my mother was, my, I was forced to go into church every day as a kid. And now they tell you, I don't even go to church. It's the most forced indoctrination in history. Christianity. Anything that's forced upon you is not good for you. That's not your natural essence. That's not what you want to be. But you didn't gain a mind of your own yet. So your frontal lobe is still developing and is destroyed by indoctrination. You can't even think for yourself. But I have compassion. I still have compassion for humans because I understand these things. It's hard to break out addictions and indoctrination, deprogramming and reprogramming. But I'll tell you, that's the greatest thing i ever done in my life. That's the greatest mission for a chosen one, for anyone. To break out of the system that was designed to go against your well-being. <laughs> it's breaking the matrix, man. So that's the greatest thing you will ever do is deprogram your mind and reprogram your mind. Think for yourself. Learn for yourself. Be your own teacher. It's a time to become your own teacher. Become your own shepherd. Don't be scared. People just love to... People are scared to start over in life. Complacency is the death of you. Complacency is the biggest growth stunner. Complacency stunts your growth. So here's a perfect story that describes religion. There's a Chinese metaphor of a story called the frog in the whale, right? Where the frog sits at the bottom of the whale. He looks up, see the sky from the circle of the whale. And he thinks that is the entire universe because that is all he see. That's all he know, right? Like this frog thinks he knows everything about the universe because he's sitting complacent in this hole because that's all he sees. But he thinks he knows everything about the universe. He thinks that's the entire universe. The correlation with that of religion is religion will turn you into the frog at the bottom of the well. It will have you looking at the sky from the bottom of the well and you think that's the entire cosmos. You think that's the entire universe. It leaves you one track minded, closed minded. You're living in a box. In that case, you're living in a circle, in a bubble. It's like the whale's circle is a religious open ceiling. Giving the frog enough of the invisible truth that it strips away the frog's cosmic consciousness. Don't be a frog in the whale.
But the frog has a lot to learn. It has to learn that the world is bigger than its culture. The world is bigger than its neighborhood. That's what I tell people like about traveling, right? Coming from the inner city, it's like, dog, the world is bigger than your block. The world is bigger than your neighborhood. You got to get out. But I get it. It's all they know. When it's all you know, is you can't talk sense into someone. It's just something drastic happens and they have to go search for themselves. So with that whale being the frog's entire world, that left him blind, drowning in complacency. But the polarity of complacency is evolution. But growth makes you claustrophobic outgrowing small places and closed minds. Your spirit has to be too big for confinement. Be the dystopian bred child that envisions utopia. Be the frog that climbed out of that well. You can do it. Because the bird born in a cage thinks spreading his wings is a sin. Become the phoenix who's too big for the cage. Reaching Christ consciousness is detaching from old beliefs and reaching mental sovereignty and clarity of one's divine purpose. It's the fool versus the wise one. The wise one reads the biblical text and interprets it spiritually. And the fool reads the biblical text and it turns them into a fundamentalist as they take the Bible word for word, literally. That's because they're disconnected from their sixth sense. Never pray to the gods of your conquerors. Your ancestors don't like you. You sold out. So the God you praying to is the wrong God. That's the Western world God. The God of your conquerors. The Old Testament God is the God of the fools. The divine source is the God of the wise ones. The belief system of America, of the Western Hemisphere, is the Western God. The Old Testament God. That's really Satan. I know this probably sounds so crazy to you, but once you do your research, you'll understand it soon. So let's talk about the left-hand path and the right-hand path. What is your destiny? Are you taking the left-hand path? On the right hand path. The left hand path is the non-conformist, the rubble with the cause, the rubble of society, the outcasts of their family, those who speak truth, those who enter spirituality. The right hand path is the orthodox path, the religious path, the follow the crowd, scared to be free. The left hand path, the black sheep who challenges the status quo, who hate rules. But let's say the dark side of the left hand path is when it goes into dark spirituality when you use things like black magic and you become Satanist and things like that. That's the dark side of the left-hand path. And you know, the right-hand path is someone who needs structure of the universe, that needs a boss, that needs to follow rules, to feel like they're doing the right thing, to obey. The left-hand path also contains sex magic and sexual liberation. You know, that's some Aquarius stuff right there. All about sexual liberation and freedom you know, because ruled by Uranus. The left hand path is associated with black magic, where you use your superpowers for selfish purposes. And the right hand path is associated with white magic that is used for selfless purposes. What society try to trick you in believing is the right hand path is, you know, the godly path. And of course, because they want you to follow order, they want you to follow structure and obey their Yahweh, their God. One who kill, creates mass destruction, kill men, women, innocent babies, all types of The right hand people who have a problem with believing in the unseen because they're so dis disconnected to their sixth sense. They're disconnected to the fourth dimension, the astral world, and the fifth dimension and above. These are very materialistic people. What they need material matter is proof of existence, right? And in episode one, I told you matter don't matter. But matter is all that matters to them. <laughs> That's the crazy thing. So I, I guess their pineal gland is so calcified where they can't receive information, proper information to their third eye chakra. It's basically, you know how people say, if it ain't on the gram, then it ain't happen. It's basically how they operate. If they don't physically see it, it can't be possible. How? You will learn sooner or later about the unseen, the power of the unseen. The real world is the unseen. I might as well get to it now. The Let's say the movie of the day. But it's a series show. Also movies. None other than X-Files. So I created an archetype. The Scully and Mulder archetype. Right? And it basically goes along with the spirituality versus religion. Five cents versus six cents. The shaman versus the doctor. Whatever, you know. Versus, you know, a medical doctor versus the herbalist. And it goes along with the Indigo Twins, right? What path they represent. 
Those who label this extrasensory perception gift as pseudoscience are the scientific method minds like Dana Scully. And those who are gifted to see the universal truth with the eye of providence and operate in the spirit world of truth is Fox Mulder. But in the physical world, the Scully archetype is mentally trained to view the Mulder archetype as insane because they see past the mundane and believe in the spiritual truth more than the physical truth. The Mulder type operates from the sacred chakra because they make decisions based on their high levels of intuition, aka gut feeling. The Scully archetype is logical and needs physical proof to believe in something. Therefore, a Scully archetype believing in God will be hypocritical. But they're usually atheists or agnostics because their innate skepticism of the supernatural. The Morda archetype is open-minded, optimistic, and seeks all forms of truth. The Scully archetype is closed-minded, pessimistic, cynical, and seeks biological validities. The Morda archetype can go off of feeling so much that they ignore the logic sometimes. The scientific mind will label holistic remedies as quackery, but the irony in that is pharmaceutical companies take an extract of a plant but add toxic, hazardous chemicals to their products to give the patient a quick fix but long-term side effects. So, if holistic remedies are quackery, then why use plants at all? But got the audacity to label the real holistic healing pseudoscience and quackery. But that's done out of spite because it's all a money game. In the same way that Uber is the enemy of taxi drivers and Netflix is the adversary of Blockbuster, herbalists and farmers are the enemy of pharmaceutical companies. It's like the street version drug game. You can't hustle on someone else's block, try to take their customers and not expect retaliation. Their entitlement and their greed will lead them to destroy you in any way they can. That's draconian energy and pure authoritarianism. So since X-Files was, let's say, the series of the day, right? It was more of a series than the movie, although it had two movies. Let's do the movie of the day, and that is They Live. Now, that movie is literally my life, where it's just basically about seeing everything for what it really is. It's looking past the surface and seeing the inner depths of the surface. It's, it's just looking past the surface. It's an ability of clairvoyance, man, mixed with clairsentience, where I don't look at this person's physical beauty and get so amazed and think, they're the most beautiful person. I feel their soul. I look at their soul. I search for their soul. I see their inner beauty and their inner ugliness where let's say the most, let's say a facially challenged person can have the most beautiful soul you've ever met, right? So, and it's just, you see things through, you know, through sports entertainment. You see what it's really about. You see the government distractions and you see the conformity. You, you This, this world is when you live in a world where money is God, you see how ugly people's souls are and what they do for money. And it's like, there's a scene in the movie where, like, you pick, like there's a scene in the movie where, like, he finds glasses, right? It's basically, he finds glasses, and the glasses represent your third eye, right? He finds glasses in the alley, stuff like that, and his friend comes along that he met. And he tried to get his friend, he tried to put the glasses on his friend, but his friend didn't want to see it. So they started literally fighting in the alley. So that's just like a representation of you can't force nobody to change. You can't put the glasses that God made designed specifically for you onto someone else's face until they're ready. They have to be ready to waken up. So anyone with that ability is basically you walking out in public and you see the you see and feel the zombie apocalypse. You see it. You see people sadness. You see people are drunk. When you walk past bars and things like that, like you see the tormented soul. It's like when I went to Amsterdam, was it earlier this year, January? I went to Red Light District. And for those who don't know what Red Light District is, it's about prostitution and brothels and stuff like that. And I saw the girls in the box windows. And it's just like me, with my gift, the empathy, I felt it. I just saw tormented souls just waving, just waving. Just, just welcoming you to take advantage of them and their trauma and their hurt. So, and it's like, I don't see zoos. I see cages and prisons for animals. I don't look at aquariums and things as fun. I, you know, it's just another cages for they supposed to be in their natural habitats, right? Those are the things. That's what that movie is about. You're seeing things for what it really is. So, and I love that movie because as an indigo child, I was literally born to expose hypocrisy and show you the exact truth, things for what it really is, no matter how ugly it is.
Welcome to Channel 555, Nonconformist News. I am L. I am here to expose lies. Now today's lie is Christ's birth and Christmas. The layers of surrounding Christmas is the most layered of all holidays. Now every adult should know December is not the birth of Yeshua ben Yosef, a.k.a. Jesus. His birth indicates he was born in a stable. And there was a shepherd there who was watching over the flock of sheep in the nighttime. But in reality, there will be no flock of sheep in the fields in the middle of the winter. During that time of the year, there will be no grass in the field and the animals will be in the stable. That's a warm season activity. But throughout history and millenniums before Jesus, you know who else's birthday was December 25th? Horus, Dionysus, Mithra, Krishna, Addis, and Nimrod. Everything is a lie. All lies. I am L. This is Nonconformist News, Channel 555. Thank you, Chombo. Back to you. Christians like to cherry pick the Bible where they hate astrology and stuff so much. They call it witchcraft and all that. But literally, the Bible is astrotheology. Literally. It tells you the influence of the stars all throughout the Bible. And my book, Imperial Man, explains all of that. So, man, we all know that Christians are the most hypocritical, judgmental entities that it is, man. I remember when I was in London this was last year, I was walking with someone friend and uh, I was behind them and it's like this church this Christian guy like he had like flyers and stuff you know passing out and, like he gave them one and I was behind them and he was like yeah you can give it to me too he looked like he would need this that's because I'm tied it up so it looked like I need to go to church and hear Jesus words right oh I am Jesus the f are you talking about Indigo children, you wait, you hear what Dick Gregory say? You waiting for the second coming. They already here. The indigo children is here, boy. This is the second coming. We are the healers. Jesus, Yeshua is walking the earth. Millions of us. We creating this new generation of healing. This is the generation of healing. This is the first generation of healing. Healing the mind, body, spirit, soul, all of that. We the ones who focus on that. Everything Jesus was doing in that Bible, we are doing everything so it brainwashes you guys into thinking that god's son is just this thing that's never can be achievable again in life like no that's because you don't know yourself you don't know your powers i know my life story coincides with the jesus story all day it's crazy there's no christ consciousness without a crucifixion i hope that don't go over your head so you couldn't walk the path of a chosen one if you tried you would have been killed yourself you would have been took yourself out. Here's what religion and stereotypes do, right? There was this Muslim guy from Pakistan or Afghanistan. I don't know which one. I forgot. I think Pakistan. But he like he was telling me like, man, like I grew up hating tattoos. You know, like I hate them. I don't like them, right? So as conversation go, I don't say nothing about it. But as conversation going, we talk about like world topics and stuff. And I add my two cents in. And he see my two cents is priceless. And he see this young black American man has some sense, right? And then he says, man, you're smarter than I thought. So if I was an egoic person with an egoic mind, I could have took offense to that. If my ego was sensitive, I could have took offense to that. Like, who are you talking to? You know? But I laugh at these things because I thrive off of proving people right, proving people wrong with my intelligence. I am nothing what you think I am. The way you prejudge me, oh, there's a hung jury. You got to go back. You can't reach a verdict. The way you judge me, you're wrong. I'm nothing you thought I was. I always leave pe people's faces, their jaws drop when they find out what I am. So when they find out my intellect, when they hear me speak, but you see this, you see the tattoos, you see the jury, you see, you know, whatever, fancy looking. I'm looking like a, a rapper, hip hop. So you think I'm dumb and ignorant. You're the dumb and ignorant one. And I told him, I'm like, I bet you won't judge nobody else no more. He just laughed. And now he, you know, he want to be my best friend every time he sees me. His respect went from here to through the roof. And, you know, we talk about travel and all of that. So, man, stop judging people. This is 24. Get out that old way of thinking. Burn down the old earth. Build a new earth. Like I said, I don't have no ego, with, no sensitive ego attached to it when these things happen. I just laugh and God bless them. Although I'm, I'm getting the word blessed out of my system because that is the real meaning of that, the etymology of that. It's a curse. You know, these words are spells, man. And I'm so, I'll shade to them.
we got to break away from these things that our slave masters designed for us. Think about it. They still have captivity over your mind if you're still utilizing their structures. Think about it, though. Like, how are you mentally free if you're living the lifestyle that your slave master designed for you? How are you spiritually free? How are you psycho spiritually free if you are living the life that your slave master designed for you? And defending it is Stockholm Syndrome. And, and mourning your oppressors is the worst Stockholm Syndrome there is. It's a slap in the face of the ancestors. It's like when Queen Elizabeth died, black people shout, oh, royalty, the queen, oh, my God, crying. Do you know who this person is? No, they don't. Because ignorance is bliss. is the lack of knowledge. They're not informed. You don't mourn your oppressors. What? You are ultimate coon. And you don't even know it. Come on, man. Blacks crying over Queen Elizabeth's death is like white Jews crying over Adolf Hitler's death. Hitler's death. So, or the like Congolese crying say, over King Leopold of Belgium's the death. The day black people will be mentally free and have knowledge of self is when black churches remove paintings of white Jesus. It's like, look at the little kids, right? Little kids are impressionable. Every religion has a God that looks like them, look like their ethnicity. What does the black race have to be inspired by? White Jesus, Caesar Borgia, blonde hair, blue eyes from the Caucasus Mountains. So we lack identity. So until we change all of that, you're just still a mental slave, man. And as we talk about this versus that, Actually, the world needs separation. This realm needs separation because it's, it creates the law of polarity and equilibrium because we are all the same, but we are all different. And recently, this Kendrick Lamar and Drake battle was the perfect example of the separation and the separation that I'm totally fine with in this universe because it's needed. Let me explain the separation. And for those that know me or you don't know me now, just know I am a true hip hop connoisseur. I know deep knowledge about hip hop, the history of front to back. And but I don't do the bread and circuses of it, the, the antics, the social media, the, the comments, the, the blogs about it, the, the, the silly part of it, man, the entertainment part. No, of the battle and what it represented for me. I look at everything from a third eye view. Everything is just my natural way of just spotting out things. And this Kendrick and Drake battle is nothing but the woke versus the sleepwalkers, the indigenous versus the colonizers, the vax versus the unvax, spiritual versus religion. Like, that's all it is. It's 3D versus 5D. It's integrity versus immorality, toxic versus healing, higher self versus lower self. So that's all that it represents, what I see. It. I don't look at it for the entertainment purposes. Nah. So for those that are still watching, thank you. I appreciate it from the bottom and the top of my heart. I would love to do some promotions right quick. And I have three courses, one about spiritual alchemy, one is Starseed Masterclass Cosmic Consciousness, and one is 108 Ways to Peace. So I have three courses you can check out. And also, of course, my Osayan Herbs for those who love herbal remedies, herbal medicine. Nathan, man, tap in with your boy. It says the end of episode two, spirituality versus religion, right hand versus left hand, Mulder versus Scully, one love. They look at me strange because I'm different. I look at them strange because they're all the same. I'm going to die. Maybe you're fucking with a genius So it's hard to understand me But that's okay Okay This ain't your average joke Name if so you better cool your jazz But you feel this less and you lose all best So I be taking your boo on a cruise with that And you lose your breath but gain your wings to be the one Who flew the cuckoo's nest The copper, new blue blacks, new coop fresh With a new cute boo with two hoods breasts The shit I'm left before the next blood more than I was thinking we'd ride over to the new sunset I was wrong like you fools, but you knew that already I wake up in the morning, put my human suit on Learn to transform the day I was born From tadpole to frog to press Now I got Tiana giving scorn about